this is a speech about fish, basically. But there will not be a million fish names in it. Okay, it's about aquaculture, <laughs> fish farming. And I'll just wait for Federica, who's there. Okay, so I will start. Ladies and gentlemen, over Christmas, my husband and I watched a DVD together, which was a kind of landmark moment because this never happens in our busy life. But we sat down and watched the DVD, and it was a very enjoyable film with Scottish actor Ewan McGregor, which made it even more enjoyable as far as I was concerned. Uh, and this film was called Salmon Fishing in the Yemen. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's the story of a visionary sheikh from the Yemen who is a very keen fisherman and who decides that he wants to build a dam in the Yemen and introduce salmon into uh, the newly created river so that the salmon can start running and uh, people can fish. But the trouble is they can't find any wild salmon to stock this river in the Yemen, although they've managed to build the dam, etc. And so they have to turn to farmed salmon to stock the river. And this got me uh, thinking about fish farming, which many people present as the most logical, viable alternative to eating wild fish. We all know by now, or at least we all, I, th I hope we all know, that um, wild fish are in decline in... Uh, well, virtually everywhere in the world. They've been overfished, uh, the stocks are declining, and so we need to do something about it. And some people think that what we need to do is eat farmed fish instead. So today I would like to go through some of the arguments in favour of farmed fish and against. In fact, what I'm going to do is present uh, the disadvantages of fish farming and then try to come up with a solution for each disadvantage. So the first problem that is often discussed uh, in respect of fish farming is that the stocking density of the fish is very high. So you have many specimens living in close proximity in these big nets. And uh, this increases the risk of diseases spreading. As a result, the producers, I don't know if we can call them fish farmers, administer antibiotics to their fish. The problem with this is that it can cause resistance to antibiotics because we then eat the flesh of these uh, salmon, typically, in Europe, and there can be cross-contamination. Here we are eating this fish that has been treated with antibiotics, and that can lead to bacteria that are resistant to those antibiotics. Now one solution to this problem is that you could install fish farms offshore, a long way offshore, about three miles, and there there's more space. You could create bigger pens for the fish. The stocking density would be lower, so they would be less prone to disease, and you wouldn't need to treat them all with antibiotics. This is the theory. At which point the um, producer could label the fish that he produces as antibiotic free and charge a premium for it, what's more. So that's a possible solution to the problem of antibiotics. Second problem that is all often discussed uh, in respect of fish farming, and again I'm talking about salmon, which is basically what we farm in Europe, is that the salmon uh, tend to be infested with a small parasite. They're called lice in English. And these lice are then passed on to the wild fish that live in the same waters. Now one quite natural solution to this is to bring in another species of fish, which is called a wrasse, and which happens to... Um, be good at cleaning the scales of the salmon. It actually removes the lice from the scales of the salmon. So that sounds like quite a nice solution to the lice problem and I suppose uh, the salmon would live in a sort of symbiotic relationship with this other fish in the same way that uh, 
Some other species of animals or plants live in symbiotic relationships. Hippopotami, or are they hippopotamuses, uh, often have a little bird that comes and cleans. I can't quite remember whether it's their teeth or their skin. But anyway, there are many such examples. Third problem with uh, farmed salmon is that underneath these massive pens that have hundreds and hundreds of fish in them, a sort of dead zone is created of fish droppings and leftover food, little bits of food, and it all sinks slowly down to the seabed where it prevents anything else from growing or living. So you have a dead zone around your fish farm. What could you do about this? Well, one alternative would be to farm mussels in the same place as you farm your salmon. You probably know that you can grow mussels along ropes in the water. And mussels like to feed on precisely the sort of waste that is created near a fish farm. So that's one solution. Another solution would be, again, to create a fish farm offshore, because there you have the currents in the water, and so the currents would clean out your nets that contain the salmon. Fourth problem that I want to talk about today is the problem of SKPs. It is all but impossible to create a fish farm where salmon remain in captivity. There's always one or two that escape from the nets and they go off and crossbreed with their wild cousins, which is a bad thing, a bad thing because the farmed fish are less robust, they're less athletic, uh, they've been treated with antibiotics. There's less genetic variability in the farmed fish and so it's a bad thing for them to crossbreed with their wild cousins. One solution to that could be to make sure that you set up your fish farm in uh, an area where there are no wild cousins for this particular species of fish to crossbreed with. Thinking about this latter argument, I wondered if you did that, whether you wouldn't be setting up your fish farm in an area that actually isn't very suitable for your fish. If you're putting it somewhere where there are no wild cousins, there's probably a reason why the wild fish of the same species don't live there. So I'm not convinced by this um, argument, and indeed there are counter-arguments to every suggestion that I have made in my list. For example, I talked about the fish called the wrasse that can clean salmon of all their lice. Well, fair enough, but where are we going to find all these fish, the cleaner fish? Uh, I don't know in which waters they live. Do they normally live in the same kind of conditions as salmon? I don't know. Would you have to breed enough of them to clean up your salmon? So I'm not sure this is a very viable solution. And you could come up with uh, similar counter-arguments to every single suggestion that I have made in my list. But what I want to do instead of that is to focus on the big issue as I see it. I already mentioned that the fish that we farm in Europe is chiefly salmon. In some other parts of the world they, fish, uh, sorry, they farm vegetarian fish, like carp, but the fish that we farm in Europe are carnivorous. They're salmon or occasionally we farm some sea bass in countries like Greece. Now, there is a very obvious issue with farming carnivorous fish, and that is that carnivorous fish like salmon eat fish. Where do you find the fish to feed them with? Typically, they are wild fish that are caught in order to feed the farmed fish. So I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this, uh, that having lots and lots of fish farms, more and more fish farms, is not actually the solution to stock depletion uh, in the sea, because you still have to fish enough food for your salmon. Now some people have said, 
oh, there are ways around this, you can make production methods more efficient, you can uh, produce a type of fish meal that is more appropriate for the needs of your salmon. And some have even argued that you can use waste products or things that would otherwise be thrown away to produce the fish meal that you need to feed your salmon. And one very good example of this is uh, the people who say that the fish that is now going to be landed because the European Union has introduced a discard ban, that fish that is henceforth going to be landed instead of thrown overboard back into the sea as it used to be, could be turned into fish meal. I don't know if you've heard about this discard ban, uh, but the rules have been tightened up recently in the EU and the idea the idea is being presented as a discard ban, i.e. zero fish thrown back into the sea. It's not actually zero, of course. It's something like 5%. So, fishermen are no longer allowed to throw fish back in the sea if it's not the target species, if it's not what they were trying to catch. They have to come back to the port and land that fish anyway. So some people have now said, well, since they're going to be bringing the fish back anyway, or whatever it is, uh, sea, sea urchins, starfish, then let's do something with it and let us produce fish meal with it and then we can use the fish meal to feed salmon in our fish farms. You can sort of see the logic of this argument, except that to my mind, uh, it is still moving in the direction of we need to produce more fish because there's a demand for fish there's a rising demand worldwide, both for fish and for meat, so we need to produce more in a more efficient way. And I think this misses the point. As far as I'm concerned, the fish that will now be landed, instead of being discarded back into the sea, are still fish that should never have been removed from the sea. They should never have been fished in the first place. <clears throat> We're still wasting wild fish, if you see what I mean that are needed out there in the sea to reconstitute the stocks. So I think the solution is not to find new and exciting and efficient ways of producing fish meal for all the salmon that we are going to farm. I think the solution is a very simple one, and it is that we should drastically reduce our fish consumption. And indeed, at the moment, the situation is so bad with regard to uh, stocks of most fish species that I think we should consider stopping uh, eating fish at all. Thank you.